Hello and a really warm welcome to Church Online here at St Barnabas. It's great to welcome you here to church today and I hope that you encounter something of the presence of God as you worship with us today. We're, we're welcoming a special guest uh, uh, speaker uh, to our service today, Derek Wormsley, who is the uh, Director of Ordinance and Vocation at the Diocese of Leeds. It's a bit of a, an odd title, I know, but basically uh, Derek is in charge of the team that support men and women who feel called to ordination and uh, they work with them uh, through the selection process and take them into training. I'm also one of uh, Derek's team in, in that role and it's been my great joy uh, to see my fourth candidate get through uh, to ordination training uh, in the last week or so. Derek's passion is for everyone to discover their calling, not just vicars, but everybody. So he'll be speaking to us a bit later on and encouraging us all to discover what God is calling us to do for him. As ever today, we'll be worshipping through song and uh, Jennifer and Sarah will be leading us in this. But let's begin with a prayer set for today, this Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's begin by singing together, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And then Nigel is going to bring us our reading today. Lord God Almighty 
reading is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel, from verse 16, reading to the end. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Derek Wormsley and it's great to be joining you this morning uh, for this service online. I was actually invited to come and preach for you uh, had we not been in lockdown. So it's great that I've got this opportunity uh, to record this sermon and speak to you anyway. Uh, I've been thinking this week about the reading that uh, we're set for this week, the Great Commission is what it's called, from the end of Matthew's Gospel. And it takes place on a mountain. It doesn't say where it is, and there's been much speculation about where this mountain is. It's obviously in Israel. Uh, it's somewhere between Jerusalem and Galilee. When my wife and I went to Israel oh, about 13 years ago now, uh, we went up a mountain as part of um, our time there. And I'm convinced this is the mountain. It's got this amazing view. It looks down on the Sea of Galilee and uh, over to the left, when you look down, you can see the little town of Magdala, where Mary Magdalene came from. And it's a great place to stand and uh, envision people for going out into all the world. Last week, we talked about uh, Pentecost and this reading can confuse us because Pentecost is 50 days after the crucifixion. It's 10 days after Jesus was ascended into heaven. And um, we're now gone backwards into that period between Jesus rising from the dead and ascending into heaven. And uh, this is known, as I say, as the Great Commission, where Jesus tells his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples. This is Trinity Sunday, which is the reason why this uh, reading is often used at this time, because it talks about baptising people in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. But what's all this got to say for us? What can we uh, learn from this passage for us? It could be a bit um, scary, really. And I've heard many sermons that say, you've got to go and you've got to tell the world, like those disciples, you've got to go in all the world and make disciples. And that can be a bit, you know, scary to say the least. Uh, that's a huge responsibility for us. Imagine if you're a bit shy or you, you just struggle a bit with the tough questions that people ask. So this morning, let me encourage you. And uh, what's really interesting is to read the passage a little bit more carefully, you notice certain things that might surprise you. First of all, uh, it says that the disciples doubted. Um, some people say you can translate this phrase, uh, they doubted. Um, most Bible translations say some of them doubted. But whichever is true, uh, there's doubts there. These are people who've been with Jesus three years, seen him dying on the cross, and they've seen him come back to life. You'd think they'd be so excited. But as they gather around him, uh, avoiding all the social distancing rules, uh, and they gather around him, he says, all authority has been given to me, uh, go into all the world and all that kind of stuff. But it says they doubted. So if you have doubts, uh, don't worry, God can still use you. Secondly, he says it to them, uh, to the 12 disciples who pass it on to us. This is not said to one person, it's said to the whole group on behalf of the church. Evangelism, telling the world, is something that we do all together. It's not a, a solo project. It's not something that special individuals are the only ones who are allowed to do it or able to do it. Evangelism is something we share as a group, giving our different gifts to the tasks in different ways. And thirdly, um, remember, because we had Pentecost last week, that Jesus promises here, 
I will be with you always to the end of the age. And later on we get into the book of Acts. He says, wait, and the power from on high will come upon you and you will be witnesses. They're scared. They're doubting. And it's only when they receive the Holy Spirit uh, that they're enabled to go into all the world. The Holy Spirit propels them. They can't help themselves. And if we have the Holy Spirit at work in the church together, not just individually, uh, then that's how God will work. Uh, we can be encouraged that God doesn't leave us to do this task on our own. The Holy Spirit comes and he equips us to do this job. I will be with you always, says Jesus, to the end of the age. And thirdly, because it's Trinity Sunday, I'm reminded of a conversation I had strangely with uh, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. He was talking about prayer to a group of uh, clergy. And he said, the thing about prayer, which we find so hard, is to remember that we're joining in. The Trinity are already talking to each other. Jesus is praying on our behalf. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us. And when we come to pray, uh, we join in with this conversation. And when it comes to mission, uh, mission is something that God is already doing. The theologians use big words like the missio dei. They always have to use special phrases for these things. But it basically means that God is already at work in his world. And often it's just that we turn up and join in with what he's already doing. So many people become Christians when we just arrive and just act as if you like spiritual midwives for what God is already doing. And really, um, my, my job is, um, is the Diocesan Director of Ordinance of Vocations, and vocation is my specialist subject, you might say. Um, and, and I like to define vocation as seeing what God is already doing and joining in. And the challenge to us today is to see what God is already doing and join in. God is, has a mission for his world. Uh, he wants us to go into the world and make disciples, to do it together, to do it in the power of the Spirit and do it despite our doubts. Someone I know who describes herself as um, very shy and who struggles with it, the whole idea of evangelism was on a train journey with someone she knew a little bit because they were doing a training course together. And this person was talking about how they wanted to be part of a community. That's all, all they were saying, really. And uh, my friend said, well, um, I belong to a church. Why don't you um, try that? Well, to cut a long story short, that lady and her whole family are now Christians, have been many years. Uh, one of them is working as a missionary in South America. Another is a school chaplain. And they're all involved in, uh, in Christian work in different ways. From one little conversation where somebody realised what God was doing and joined in and just said, why don't you come to church? So be encouraged on this Trinity Sunday. Um, maybe it's time to think about what you're doing and how you might join in with what God is doing. Uh, if you want to talk more about that, you can ring me or more suitably maybe have a chat with Dave, your vicar, and see how you can help in the work of growing the kingdom of God, of taking the gospel into all the world and making disciples. Thanks for listening. God bless. Rosemary is now going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Let us pray. God of mercy and justice, hear us as we cry to you in our fear and anxiety over our world today. When our hearts are heavy, Lord, we know that in everything we encounter, we can fall back on you, our solid rock and foundation. You are unchangeable, Lord, our refuge in times of trouble. You stop us from falling and support us in your everlasting arms. Give us your calming peace when we turn to you. Build us up, Lord. Strengthen our faith, we pray, and give us courage to be your light in the world. Help us, Lord, to see the bright side of life. We give you thanks for our enjoyment of the trees, flowers and birds outside our window or encountered on our walks. For the wonderful blue skies and sunshine we've had this spring. We thank you for the opportunities we've had to do something different, to be more creative, for getting to know our neighbours better and for the chance to rest and relax. Thank you for your constant presence through every circumstance. 
Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for grace and peace to pour down upon the hurt and anger in our world today caused by racial inequality. We pray for the healing of racial injustice in all its forms and ask that leaders of nations work to defeat the unfairnesses that cause division. Good and gracious God, who loves and delights in every one of us, we pray for harmony amongst all people, knowing that every individual is special in your sight. Amen. Loving Lord, we continue to pray for this challenging season of our lives. We pray for those who are sick and those who strive to treat and care for them. We pray for the protection of older people and those who are vulnerable, that they may be safe from the virus. We pray for those who lead the country and for all scientific and medical advisers that they may make wise decisions when easing us out of lockdown. We pray for teachers and all those who work in schools as they tackle the conundrum of bringing children back into the classroom safely. And we give thanks for all those providing essential services to keep our lives running smoothly. Help us, Lord, to exercise the good sense you give us as we approach each day in faith, knowing that you are with us always, Lord, to the very end of the age. Amen. Let us join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And now uh, Sarah is going to lead us in our next song, which is called In a Time of Desperation. Oh, you are my 
Before we end our service today, Maureen is going to uh, share with us uh, a poem that she has written uh, describing her life in lockdown. Whilst this world is full of care, I've found the time to sit in a chair, to read in the morning, to watch TV, to ring a friend, just to be. I've learned to FaceTime, WhatsApp and Zoom. Sometimes I hoover and dust a room. No meetings, no rushing, no going away. I lie in, be lazy. What day is it today? I pray for the bereaved. I pray for the sick. We'll get through this, but it won't be quick. And when this virus war is over, and when we're all unlocked, remind us, Lord, to stop and stare, to bring our needs to you in prayer, to value family and friends and share, and know that you are always there to love, forgive and guide and care. As we come to the end of our time together today, just a reminder to uh, to get in touch if you uh, need any uh, practical or uh, prayer support at this time. Uh, if you want to talk about where you think God might be uh, calling you, what, he's, what his call is on your life as well, then uh, do get in touch and I'd love to chat to you about it. Uh, also, do keep on donating to the work of the, the Food Bank. Thank you so much to everybody who's been uh, donating over the past few weeks. Uh, thank you uh, for your generosity. And it's been amazing to see uh, all the many uh, bootloads uh, that have been going down to the Food Bank. But for now, let's end with a blessing. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.